Okay, it looks like it might work. Hey, Brandon, welcome. Uh, good to see those of you who are here. Uh, hello to those who are joining us later on in the recording. Uh, appreciate those, uh, everyone, for your time. And we're in week eight. Uh, I don't know how that's possible, but uh, week eight of our course, and Matt's going to lead us out today. So thanks, Matt. Take it away. Yeah, happy to be here. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I echo Clint with, holy crap, it's week 10. When did that happen? Um, I'm also very curious of why it's ISTE next week. Um, it feels like that should still be light years away. Um, first things first, folks, good to have you here. Um, good to see everyone. Um, we are in week eight, which means that we are plowing ahead towards the end of the course and week 10, 11, and 12, which is where our assignments, we start doing the letter to the superintendent and some of those bigger assignments in the course. So we'll be talking about those a little bit, kind of give you some reminders. We're finishing up our gear projects this week and next. So you're definitely going to want to make sure you pay close attention because this week and next week we have different I, like different requirements for the assignment. The past couple of weeks, we've been requiring the same thing. This week, we change them up a little bit. Keep you on your toes a little bit during the summer. So we got you set up. So first of all, folks, this week, week eight, we've got read chapter seven, building your connected learning community, as well, followed by your discussion. Remember to post your video, or your enhanced post by Sunday night, 11.59 p.m., and then have your other two posts in by Wednesday evening, 11.59 p.m. Um, if you're a little bit late with that, I know it's summer. Sometimes we forget. Just let us know. Shoot us an email. Don't sit in the dark and and worry. Give us a give us a little shot and let us know what's going on. The other assignment this week, folks, is uh, is your weekly gear paper or project. This week, the only option, folks, is to write a one to two page double space paper in ML or in APA format. The reason being, we'll get into a little bit later, but the content for this week is very specific around budgets, and we really want you to spend some time diving into the literature and, and doing a bit of writing about it. So um, that's what we're working on folks. So very similar assignments to the past week. We'll get into some of the details here in a minute. Um, again, week seven is, or sorry, chapter seven is building your connected community, our learning community, what, what kind of different things to consider. And then we're doing the future reading framework, budget and resources this week. The four questions are efficiency and cost savings, alignment to district and school plans, consistent funding streams, and learning return on investment. Now, if you are going, I don't know where my district school's budget is, don't worry, we're going to show you a great resource because um, the DTL, the, the, the Digital Teaching and Learning Grant in the state of Utah, has some great resources for both uh, you guys in this class and then just the general public to look over on all four of these counts. So we'll show that in just a couple of minutes. But the first thing we want to get to, and I think I might have to stop share really quick because I forgot to share my audio. So I'm going to do that really quick. Boom. Share. Back in, folks. Uh, just to keep you in uh, kind of the laughing mood, folks, uh, if you haven't seen this, this is absolutely hilarious. It's an April Fool's video, but it's just great. Here we go. All right. Going through the list with the spelling. You're checking your own list. Here we go. The first word was Blorsky. I lost my Blorsky at a carnival. B-L-O-R-S-K-E-E. -E. E -E. The next word was tangentine. I eat my spaghetti with a tangentine. That it's T-A-N-G-E-T-E-E-N. Tangentine. The next word is spiku. Look, there's a spiku. S-P-E-E-K-U-Z-S-L-M-N. There's silent letters at the end of that one. Yep, spiku. S-P-E-E-K-U-Z-S-L-M-N. It's, yep, it's not, nope, it's actually from a, somewhere else, not here. The next word, was a matter. Students said they were sick. I said, was a matter with you. W-A-Z-A-M-A-T-A, -A -A. was a matter. Was a matter. The next word is slippert. Be careful when you're sleeping, there might be a slippert in your house. Slippert, S-L-I-P-E-R-T, slippert. Nice. The next word is ch, -ch, ch The horse was angry, so I said ch ch, -ch. That's C-H-C-H-C-H. -H -C -H. Nice. Nice work. The last word is Rolaskatox. Rolaskatox was surprised when Jinx took the crown. That's R-O-L hyphen. What? A-S-K-A hyphen. 
T O X. If you didn't get the hyphens, I'm sorry, you got that word wrong. The word is Rolaskatox. The next word was spinach. My favorite word, food is spinach and artichoke dip. That's S P E E N U C H. Spinach. The next word is shabola. Be careful that you do not catch shabola. S H A B O L A S K P. More silent letters. S H A B O L A S K P. Shabola. The next word is gur. My friend told me a secret. I looked at her and said, Gur? That's G U with an umlau. That's two dots over the U. R R R. G U with an umlau. R R R. Your next word, number 11, is April Fools because this is an April Fools joke! <laughs> Close enough. April Fools! Congratulations, turn in your test. This will be on your report card. Oh, all right. Going. Sorry, don't want to play that again, but folks, fantastic little video. Um, hopefully it puts you in a, the right mood. But also one of the things that, of, of the, talking this week is about getting into educational blogging, but also um, we've done this for the last couple of weeks, kind of getting you into that idea of being more connected. Um, that particular uh, uh, speaker, his name is Joe Brombrowski. He started out as a kindergarten teacher making these kind of funny videos. He's also a comedian. And now he tours nationally doing all sorts of stuff in comedy clubs. And uh, weirdly enough, I know he has a Hollywood agent, which is kind of cool. So education uh, connections can go a lot of different places, folks. So checking out some of these blogs, checking out different places on social media or places like Pinterest, YouTube, or Facebook groups can yield great results. A friend of mine really loved going on to Facebook and he had a Facebook group that was just about grant writing for summer travel as a teacher. And so it found some great things that way. If you're kind of going, I don't know who I could follow, what kind of people I could follow for educators or what kind of blogs to check out. We do have this list of K-12 IT influencers from 2022. This just came out a few weeks ago, I believe uh, in April. There we go. And then this is a great little short list of different educators who are really putting in the time um, in their districts, but then also nationally to create an impact and create a network for people. And a few of these people I've met uh, in real life. So like Alfonso here, the first one here, we interviewed him for the UEN Homeroom podcast last fall, and he is a fantastic human being working down on the border between Texas and Mexico um, and doing some great things with education there. A um, few others that I really love on this list, um, Ben Cogsworth, he does some great things in California with um, digital literacy and digital citizenship. Um, Eric Kurtz is on here. He's one of my favorite uh, Google educators um, out of Ohio. He's a fantastic person, um, has a great blog called Control Alt Achieve, which if you're looking for Googly stuff, it's like the, the top tier. And the last one here, folks, um, somebody that I'm excited to see at ISTE down at the very end here, Stephanie Howell, who helped me with a ton of Google stuff and also co-runs GG Ohio with Eric. And so I was recently on her podcast talking about PCBL, which was really fun. So getting out there and meeting some of these people, folks, or following them on the blogs can really open up your community, um, maybe even meet some people that have a very similar mindset to you as an educator. But again, going back to that example about uh, my friend who was into grant writing, um, it really helped him to find a community that helped him to feel at ease um, in education, which sometimes we don't have in our buildings. Sometimes we need to go outside our buildings, which is kind of cool. Um, so go, jumping into the assignment this week, folks, so digging into grants and looking at different grant writing, uh, uh, sorry, not grant writing, uh, budgetary things that you're looking at for this week's gear paper. Um, remember, it is a one to two page paper, folks. So that's the only option this week. And you're going to probably want to look at an actual grant or budget stream for district. And one of the best ones in the state of Utah is the digital teaching and learning grant through this, through USBE. On here, we've linked the, the website is dtlutah.org. So it's easy to remember folks. Um, if you go ahead and click on that link, it's gonna take you to the digital Le teaching and learning grant page, which will allow you to search both for states statewide stats or for local educational authority uh, profiles. So that's the LEA profiles here. This will allow you to find your individual district or your charter school, so your LEA, be able to click into it. So like, for instance, I'll grab the one that I live in here in Ogden, which is Ogden City uh, District right here. You can click into it and it's going to give you what cohort uh, for the grant they were a part of, what their funding stream is, their impact, 
and then some of their their uh, deep data for how it uh, helped them in their district to do specific things. Um, there's also a, a school-wide dashboard report, so you can actually click on individual schools as well. So talking about grant funding streams and how that grant money is then spent in an LEA, this is an incredible resource that could be a fantastic starting point or maybe even an end point for your discussion this week because maybe you want to dive deeply into just DTL money. Um, although there are other grants throughout the state that you might want to look at as well, depending on your background. In my class, we have some some teachers that works uh, very specifically with um, speech language. So it might be interesting to go find some, some revenue streams for that as well. But it's kind of up to you. Um, this is a great starting point. Um, any of the instructors want to add anything about the DTL uh, Utah page? Or did I hit it all? Thanks, Clint. I'm getting a thumbs up. Perfect. So that's linked on here, folks. But again, the URL dtlutah.org is super easy to find. Um, you can also find a lot of stuff on UEN's page. So we have a lot of digital teaching and learning grants uh, material on here as well. That is a little bit longer of a URL, but basically uen.org slash digital dash learning. And if we go to that page, it'll walk you through some of the digital learning grant money as well on this page. So on here, you can see here's the USB DTL. Um, digital teaching and learning dashboard and some learn platform materials as well and digging into some of the technology inventories for different districts across the state over the last few years so great way to check out funding stream where the money's coming from and then also what the money's being used for and in the, the long run how that money was having some effect as well down the line some, oh, thanks, Carol, Some uh, as well. So some other grants you might want to look into, folks, are STEM Action Grants. I could not agree with you more. STEM Action Center has some great grants that are larger for doing PB, or, uh, PD uh, instances with uh, uh, teachers and with district-wide, or the BTS Art Grants as well. Um, so those are some great opportunities there for you, folks. Um, beyond that, digging into maybe past sources that you've worked with or that you've interviewed for past gear papers might be able to work with uh, giving you some uh, deeper budgetary stuff. Um, and then on top of that, you might even want to talk to some of your local school administrators as well. So they might be able to give you some ideas on there as well. All right. With that said, folks, getting into kind of the, we're, we're cruising today. There, there's not a whole lot for, for coverage today. So we're going to get done early, which I hope you appreciate because it is mid-June and it is a short week. So I'm, I can, I can sit here and tell you the history of like Irish literature, if we want for 15 minutes, but I don't think anyone wants to hear that except for me. So, a couple things History to end out Punk class. and Emo? What was that? Oh, we can do that too. Um, <laughs> punk and Emo is uh, definitely something I could talk about at length. Clint kind of gave me a, I did that at uh, Utah Ed Camp and he went, A nice conversation about that. I learned some stuff. You really can do this off the, off the top of your head. Um, <laughs> So uh, before I get into conferences, folks, just a reminder. So again, you have your discussion post Wednesday or uh, Sunday night by 11.59 p.m., your other two posts by Wednesday, and then make sure that you do your essay this week. So that is your only option, your one to two page APA style essay about budgets. Um, as far as conferences goes, I, I kind of made this chart for everyone, some things that you might want to look into over the next couple of weeks if you're looking for, again, that technology conference. So Ursa is coming up, although registration, as I we talked about last week, was closed, but there were some waitlisted tickets, so you might still be able to get in. Um, same thing with Show Up Utah, which uh, Justin Brooksby from UEN did say it counts for the endorsement. That conference, however, also is waitlisted. It is in Salt Lake, though, and uh, it's going to be a really interesting one. Uh, Carol's, uh, I, I, Brandon, I can answer that right now. I think the conference was today and yesterday, right, Carol, for Davis? Sorry, you probably can't see me, but I was giving you two thumbs up. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yesterday Sorry, and today I couldn't see you. Yeah. R and R conference. So, yep, it's now done. Awesome. Well, and, and even though you couldn't go to maybe the Davis conference or maybe some of these other ones, make sure you check out your district. They might have a technology conference. I actually just went and presented today three times for the Box Elder School District technology conference up in uh, Brigham City, which was really fun. The other one that might be interesting for some of you, if you're a school administrator or trying to be a school administrator, is the Leading Schools Conference. That's July 12th through 14th. That is sponsored by UEN. Uh, registration, I believe, is still open. 
Um, it's a really cool three-day conference that's very much geared at administrators. So you're going to get a lot of stuff about that with design thinking and working with uh, different ideas through that. As far as national conferences, folks, I did want to point your attention to a couple things. Number one, ISTE. Uh, Clint and I will be at ISTE starting tomorrow, um, which is great. And Carol as well. That's awesome. Um, if you're there and you uh, want to join us Sunday night, uh, 7 p.m. at Cafe Du Monde, we're going to have a little get together there. Um, informal. It's B-Y-O-C-N-B, -B, so buy your own coffee and beignets, but um, join us if you'd like as well. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second, because if you're not going to ISTE, there's lots of ways to participate, and it's a really good idea for people, regardless of your level in ed education, but especially for us who are looking to be educational technologists to kind of engage yourselves in national conferences. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. If you're also looking for some national conferences that you can do for free, InstructureCon for Canvas is coming up on July 14th. It is fully virtual and it is free. So you can uh, the link is right there um, on the slide deck. So feel free to grab that and, and sign up for that conference. The next week, we also have Adobe the Adobe Education Summit, which again is three days and it's fully virtual and fully free, um, all online. Uh, tons of great presenters. I know a few of them that are going to be presenting. They're going to do some amazing things. I skipped to head too fast. And then also that same week is Nearpod Camp Engage, which again is fully virtual and free. So you could theoretically sign up for Adobe's Education Summit and Nearpod's Camp Engage, put them on two different screens and watch them at the same time. Not advisable, but it is possible. That's, I think, the best part. The last one, folks, is some other summer PD. Uh, uh, Jamie that I work with up at UEN, she is doing a summer Nearpod community series. If you're interested, she just did one a couple of days ago. It's up on YouTube. She's got a couple more in July and a couple more in August. So feel free to join those. The link to that is right there. And UEN's MOOC courses, come on and join us. There's tons of courses out there as well for different things like Google, um, PCBL, Nearpod, Canvas, Adobe, all sorts of stuff. The last thing, folks, I just put this on here today because I put this together last night. Um, not a ISTE is a hashtag that's on social media, folks. Um, it's you can search it. Not hashtag not a ISTE. A lot of people I know um, in the national wor world are going to be tweeting at that throughout the conference, and we share a lot of stuff across the board at the conference. So if even if you're not ISTE, feel free to follow that hashtag on Instagram or Twitter, or just search it out on Twitter, and you'll be able to find a ton of materials. I personally am going to be using this linked wakelet to grab everything. If I go to a session, I think something's cool. I'll put it on this wakelet. So if if you want to live vicariously my experience in New Orleans through me, that this would be the answer for it. And last year, as I did it uh, virtually, I pulled something like 200 resources together in my wakelet. So feel free to peruse that, share it with whoever you want. I'll be putting it out on social media as well. And there's lots of other people that do this as well. So find those and you're going to get some great material. All right. Last thing here, folks, uh, before we wrap up, contact us if you have any questions. We're getting down to the wire here, folks. We're going to go through the like just kind of quick reminders about the last three weeks here in a second. Um, but if you are struggling, if you're behind, if you are overwhelmed, if you're going on vacation and need a, an extension or a couple days, shoot us an email. Let us know what's going on. We'll get you set up. Um, the last thing we want you to do is be struggling on your own. Uh, we'd rather have you talk to us and make sure you're in a good place, even if you are very behind. Um, we would love to work with you. Um, all our emails are there. We have our phone numbers and our accounts, but also our Twitter accounts, but also those are on the classes. So feel free to look that up under the course instruction as well. The last thing here, folks, um, before we get to questions, just want to remind you, Upcoming projects. Um, so week one through nine, we are doing the gear project. So next week is our last one, um, which we'll talk about in, uh, next Thursday. Week 10, though, is your memo, memo to the superintendent. That should be unlocked at this point. So you can look at the assignment description and see the actual assignment and maybe even turn it in early if you're interested. Uh, 11 and 12, I think, are also open. So if you're if you're ready to roll, folks, you can grab onto those. You've got your tech training and then also your lesson plan modification. Your tech training, creative training, either do the training or write up on what you would do. So you don't actually have to give the training, although we would like you to. Um, or maybe you can talk about a training that you've done and how you'd change it. That'd be interesting as well. But make sure you at least write it up. Give us a hyperdoc video, PowerPoint, those sorts of materials. For the lesson plan, a new lesson or modification on a lesson not used in a previous course, and you're going to show full integration of technology in there. So just continuing to flex our educational technology muscles to make sure that we use those in our classroom going forward rather than just taking a class and forgetting about it immediately. So, which 
is a terrible thing. Um, with that said, folks, we've got we've got plenty of time for questions. So if you have any questions, if you're not shy, feel free to go off the mic and jump in. If you are shy, feel free to jump on the chat and we'll uh, practice some wait time here for you. I have a question. Please. So on week 12 on the lesson plan thing, um, talk to me for just a minute about the full integration of technology. Like what are you looking for exactly with that? Um, other instructors, I'm going to pull it up here, but if somebody wants to pipe in really quick for a minute and tell us a little bit about expectations on there, that would be great. And actually, I forgot to switch these folks. So your individual lesson plan is in 11. The week 12 is a tech training workshop. Sorry about that, folks. I, old slide. So this this will give you, Shanda, this will give you, a, the assignment description will give you a little bit of, of what we're looking for on this. But basically, we're looking for you to, to integrate in a meaningful way some technology into your classroom. So where maybe you did a lesson in the past that was completely direct instruction with slides, that would be in the SAMR model very low. Maybe instead you create a digital notebook for your students that they can fill out and follow along and you can do less direct instruction, more having them fill that out. So that would be an interesting use of the technology there. Um, or maybe you have a completely technology uh, lacking to a lesson. I'm, I'm going to ELA because that's where I, I cut my teeth. Um, maybe you have an essay that's on paper. And so you take that essay and you turn it into let the students make a Google site and you build off of it in that way. Clinton, you have hey, some Matt, why don't you open up that SAMR link? Yeah, absolutely. I know a lot of the folks in this class are jumping in at 5020 and may have not heard of or been exposed to the SAMR uh, and TPAC and those kind of integration um, modalities and frameworks and things like that. Uh, but basically SAMR is, can you find the, the chart down a little bit lower? Yep, brother. That's the one. Yeah, so starting to integrate technology, a lot of us started that substitution, like Matt said, where instead of a worksheet on paper, I have them do a, a digital worksheet or something like that. Or instead of writing a paper in Google Doc or on, on paper, write it in Google Docs. But how can you kind of move down that scale uh, and make that, you know, instead of just enhancing your instruction, how can you kind of use technology to transform, uh, to modify or redefine uh, what you're doing, like to something that could not be done without technology. So like maybe have your students, instead of writing uh, a paper uh, in Google Docs, have them write a blog post and then have discussions and with, you know, um, com comments back and forth or, you know, peer reviews or things like that. Just kind of ways to deeper integrate technology into that lesson. Yeah, and Clint, that's a great. And I, thanks for the reminder that some of you guys are jumping in mid mid to the class here in 5020 instead of going through 5,000, 5010 first. Um, to kind of give an example here. So like a substitution would be, I have a, a written essay. Now I'm going to have the kids do it on a Google Doc. There you go, substitution, boom, I've added technology. Then augmentation might be where you add a uh, scribble into the mix so the students can keep track of their citations and put them into their essay digitally. There we go, done, done some augmentation. Modification might be something where you have the students create a website instead of an essay still citing material. And then redefinition might be uh, something like letting the students uh, create a augmented reality experience based off of that website and adding it back to it. As you can see, difficulty and time goes up a little bit with each level. And so when we talk about SAMR, it's not a, hey, we're always reaching for the top level and every lesson needs to be up there. You're gonna bounce up and down throughout it. So on this particular assignment, when we're talking about, um, I forget the language there, but meaningful in, in technology instruction, it could be any level of SAMR to meet the needs of your classroom and your students. What we're looking for though, is that technology integration to make sure it's meaningful for you. Does that help Shanda? Yeah, that does. Only I don't teach language anymore. I teach fifth grade math. You got any good ideas for that? <laughs> uh, not off the top of my head because math, I've been in, I've been in ELA all day. That's all, all my sessions were. So that's where my brain's at. Um, 
let's see. So like going back through the SAMR model really quick. So substitution, instead of having them do the math problem on paper, they take a photo of their paper and turn it in on Canvas. There we go. You're using technology to substitute, make it a paperless classroom in a sense there. Then for augmentation, you might have them use an online program like Nearpod to do some, uh, and thank you, Anita, there we go. <laughs> the comment came out right when I was saying that. You might have a Nearpod that has math instruction on it. So that gives you a little bit of an augmentation there. Modification, you might have the students, um, instead of working out the problem on paper, talk out the problem via a tech or via uh, audio. And then yeah. maybe even right read a definition, getting up to a video of like, here's how to work through the problem. So that's that's a lot of Carol, layers. I was going to suggest the manipulatives too. That's yeah. A good idea. And Carol and Amy and Anita also mm -hmm. dropped some really great ideas for their Shanda. So the biggest thing is if you're struggling, reach out to your instructor. We can work through the idea. Reach out to your PLN and PLCs. Yep. They'll likely be more help than your instructor with specific you know, grade level content kind of stuff. Yeah. Cause most likely, at least in this moment, I'm spitballing. So you, you having a little bit more time to work with your, like your team or your instructor might be really helpful. And you've got many weeks to. to yes. This but is start thinking about it. And that's why we're bringing it up. Start thinking about it now. Yeah. This isn't due until July 20th. So you have plenty of time, almost a month to complete this and work it through. So Shanda, start where you are. And just look at incrementally, as Vygotsky called it, that zone of proximal development, that plus one, just, you know, a little beyond where you are. And that's really what we're looking for. How, you know, using that SAMR model to, to identify what you're using and, and what could be a next step. You don't have to eat the whole whale at one right. bite. Yeah. So you'd say, you know, this is how I'm currently teaching this lesson. Here's how I'm going to supplement, augment, whatever deeply integrate technology into it as best you can. Okay, as Tony said, we're all, all we're all at different levels. Yep. But yeah, you can reach out if, if you need ideas. I I might not be very responsive until like the fifth or tenth or so. Um, other questions, folks, we still got a couple of minutes. Great question. Um, I have a question. Uh, what exactly are you looking for with our blog? Because I've like made one, but I don't really have anything on it. Like what? Uh, You're going to pick four of your projects or whatever from this semester and highlight it in that on your blog. And, and outline what you've learned from those. Uh, Amy, what, what are some, what are some things, some learning that you've acquired through this particular activity uh, and see if, you know, so that others can say, I could try that. I could see how she's done that. I'd like to try, give that a try. Well, that's two weeks away, isn't it? We don't have that in the slides. Yeah. Just going very, very straightforward with it, Amy. So like they just, like a few of the instructors just said, so uh, four out of your eight projects, whichever ones you feel like best exemplify or you're most excited about whatever it works out for you, you're going to embed the artifacts. So if you did a podcast, give us the audio. If you did a video, put the video. If you did an essay, put the essay, that sort of things. Um, include a 100 to 200 word paragraph for each project, answer any questions below, and then publish the page and turn it in. So very specifically, we're looking at which ones do you think were best for you? Which ones did you learn the most out of? Embed the artifact. Tell us why. Okay. So you don't have to overcomplicate it and make, oh, beautiful backgrounds and all those sorts of things. We're just looking for very simply, show us the artifacts. Tell us why. Sharon, that's correct. This week is only paper. Because it's about budgets and numbers and no. things like that. So. For the blog post, for the blog for this week, though, we just need one post, right? Because that's oh, our discussion this sorry, week. Sorry, we all thought you were talking about the, the gear project. No. This week. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. That was good information, too, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think all we want is just your link. That's it. The discussion. So not overcomplicating it at all. And some of you guys already have been using um, Google Sites as kind of a blogging resource as well. So that might be interesting as well. Or like you said in the in your slides, if you're using Pinterest more or you know, wherever your commute 
connecting with your community of practice, just kind of share where that's happening. YouTube could count as well if you're big on making YouTube videos. And any reaction or feedback on that is, is welcome. Constructive, please. Good question. Thanks. We thought you were talking about the, yeah. We, we killed two birds with one stone with that question, Amy. Thank you. <laughs> any other questions, folks, before we wrap up? Not so much a question. I guess it is a question. Will you send a picture of the, uh, the tastiest food you have in New Orleans? We may not be able to be there, but we'd love to live that uh, through you. Yeah. I will make sure I put a couple pictures to make you jealous on my wakelet. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. Well, with that said, folks, thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your, uh, your instructors or any of the instructors will be able to help you out. Um, Clint, Carol, and I will be in New Orleans for the next week and then Ursa the next week after. So please give us a bit of grace with our response times. Um, we might be on a plane. Um, also, if you are at Ursa, folks, feel free to come join us um, in person. Tony, do we have a room for that yet? Yes. Teacher Education 205. Teacher Education 205. Mm -hmm. Come join us for a live version of the class. Um, if you can't join us, don't worry, we'll be live streaming as well. You'll just see all of us in one place, um, which will be super fun. And with that said, folks, thank you so much for all your questions, your time. Enjoy your week. Good luck with the assignments. If you have any worries or questions, reach out. But otherwise, take care of yourselves and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Matt. Well done. Well done, Matt. Thank you so very much. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. And I've already got next week's slides in the bag on ready to go. So. Well, thanks, Clint. I Wonderful, Clint. That. Thank you. Oh, not a problem. I will I not be I here. Got, I will be passing. I don't know how I security. got between week two and twelve, and nothing in between. So, I was. I'm happy. Until <laughs> you plan it, right? Step in. Now you've got week twelve. So yeah, I, I'll do week twelve. Yep. <laughs> Have to go uh, perform next week. So see how that ends up. Send a picture. Send a little video. We'd love to see the perform. Oh. A little bit of the performance. Brandon. Will do. Yes. For, okay. For sure.